Hey guys, I'm Chris the Steam Deck Guy and in this video I'm going to show you how easy it is to upgrade the internal storage in your Steam Deck OLED. And the best part is you don't need to reinstall any of your games and you don't even need a PC. Everything I am going to show you can be done directly from the Steam Deck itself and everyone who owns a Steam Deck should have the confidence to give it a go. For those of you who are not computer savvy, your internal storage is where the Steam operating system is installed together with all of your games and other applications. So the more storage, the better. My Steam Deck is a 512 gigabyte OLED model and I'll be upgrading to one terabyte in this video. Like a computer, the operating system is installed on the internal storage. So if you do want to upgrade, you either need to reinstall everything from scratch onto the new drive, or a better way is to clone your existing drive. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. And the process is ridiculously easy, as you'll see. For this clone method, you will need to pick up a NVMe enclosure. I'm using this one from Ugreen. Any will be fine, providing it supports the Steam Deck 2230 size. If you want to pick this one up, I'll have a link in the description. You also need a T6 screwdriver for later when we swap out our existing drive for the new one. Ok, let's get started. Grab your enclosure and insert your new SSD. Usually these have these little rubber clips to hold it in place. Then connect to your Steam Deck whilst in gaming mode. Whilst it's connected, navigate to settings, then storage, and you should see the external storage detected by SteamOS. Don't click the format option. This is just a quick test to make sure that it is detected and that the enclosure is working as expected. Everything else we need to do is over in desktop mode. Click the Steam button and go down to power and then select switch to desktop. In desktop mode, we need to open up a web browser. So I'll just use the default Firefox. If you have never used this before, you'll be prompted to install it first. So do that and then click launch. To clone the SSD, I'm going to be using a tool called Belina Etcher. There are other ways to do this using command line without using any tools. And chances are, if you've watched any other videos, that's the method they will use. But this video is intended for complete beginners. On the Belina Etcher website, go to downloads and download the Linux x64 version. Before we open Belina Etcher, we need to make sure that we have set our Steam Deck admin password. If you've installed Decaloader or Emudeck, then you would have set this password previously. If not, then we can set one now. Open system settings from the taskbar, then select users from the menu on the left and enter a password and then click set password. Be sure to remember this password as trying to recover it can be a right pain in the ass. We are now ready to open Belina Etcher. You'll find this in the downloads folder. The Belina Etcher interface is really simple and it's split into three easy to follow steps. Select the clone drive option, then select show hidden files to see the internal storage. If you have a micro SD card connected, you'll also see that here. The 128 gigabyte is my internal micro SD card and the 512 gigabyte is my internal storage. So I will select that one. We then need to select the target, which is where we want to clone the drive to. For this, we are going to select the one terabyte drive connected via the enclosure. We can then click flash. You'll get some warnings, so click yes, I'm sure. And it's at this point where you'll be prompted for your admin password. So enter that here and click OK. This will take some time, particularly if you have a lot of games installed. Mine only took 15 minutes or so because I only had one game installed. Once that's done, that's it. You have now cloned your existing drive to your new much larger drive and you don't need to worry about resizing the drive or partitions or anything like that. This will be taken care of automatically. We are now ready to install our cloned SSD into the Steam Deck. For this part of the video, I will be showing you how to do this for a Steam Deck OLED, but if you have an older model, go check out my older video, as there will be some differences. In that video, I also show you how to re-image your Steam Deck rather than the clone method that I showed in this video. As a bonus tip, you can use a micro SD card or a USB drive to do that. So if you don't want to go out and buy an NVMe enclosure, maybe give that method a try. Okay, so before we take the backplate off the Steam Deck, for safety, the first thing we need to do is to put the device into battery storage mode. To do this, shut down the Steam Deck until it powers off. Then hold the volume up button and power button simultaneously for a few seconds. You'll then be taken to the BIOS menu. Select setup utility in the bottom right and then over on the left, select power and then enable the battery storage mode option and click yes. 
the Steam Deck will then power off and the only way to get it back on is to connect to power. So do remember to do this later on. For this part, I recommend using the original Steam Deck case to protect your Steam Deck thumbsticks. Since this is the OLED model, all screws are Torx 6 and they are all the same size. There are eight in total on the rear. So we first need to remove all of those. Before taking off the backplate, please make sure to remove your micro SD card. It's surprising how many people forget to do this and end up with a snapped card. The next step is to pry open the backplate. For this, you'll want to use a pry tool like this one or a guitar pick type tool, but make sure that it's plastic so it doesn't scratch up the case. I find it works best inserting behind the triggers and then working your way around to loosen the clips. The Steam Deck is pretty robust, so don't worry about being too gentle. Once removed, you can set the backplate to the side. Next, we need to disconnect the battery. You do this by pulling the black tab. Again, it's pretty robust, so grab it with your fingers and pull it to the right, and it should come away fairly easily. Over on the left side, we need to disconnect the ribbon cable. You do this by lifting the white latch. I did try using tweezers, which didn't really work out for me, and instead I just used my fat fingers, which did the trick. You can then pull it downwards to disconnect. The ribbon cable is glued to the heat shield, so you'll need to gently peel this away. Again, I just use my fingers to gently pull it away. There are two screws holding the heat shield in place, one in the top left and the other in the bottom left. Before removing the shield, check if the speaker cable is taped to it. Mine was, so again I used tweezers, which were useless, so again I just used my chubby fingers to gently peel this back. With this out of the way, I could then remove the heat shield and set it to the side. We can now see the SSD, which is held in place with a single screw. Next, we just need to remove the shield around the SSD. It should just slide off easily, and then we reinsert this onto our new one. It might be a little tight, so if you need to, you can unroll wrap the shield, just be sure not to damage it. All we need to do then is to slot the new SSD into the Steam Deck and put the single screw back in place to hold it securely. Reconnect the battery, making sure to push it in all the way. Reattach this heat shield with the two screws and taping the speaker cable back into place. Reconnect the ribbon cable and then check everything is stuck down nicely. We can then put the case back on and give it a test. I'd actually recommend not putting the screws back in until you've tested it, just in case you didn't connect something properly. At this point, you need to remember that we put the Steam Deck into battery battery storage mode, so you'll need to connect it to power before it will actually turn back on. And all being well, it should boot straight into SteamOS. You don't need to redo any of the setup and all of your games will be available to you. See, I told you it was easy. We can then go to settings and then storage and as if by magic, we can see that we have all of the additional space available to us. Now you have more storage, why not install Emulec or some cool plugins? 